Okay, we're going to be looking at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Here we go. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. This is a very important verse. Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So the question is, how is a person born again? A person is born again. Do you want to go through? Yeah. Go ahead. Just Okay, a person is born again. You have to repent of your sins. It is hot in here. Go ahead and turn on the air conditioner. You have to repent of your sins, and you have to believe the gospel to be saved. And the gospel is, the Bible tells us, I declare unto you the gospel by which you're saved, that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose the third day according to the scriptures. That's what you have to believe. And we're told it in other places. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes a father except through him. You want to go through? I can sit here. I'll, I'll get my coffee. Okay. Okay, so we're on verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know, and we testify what we've seen, and we do not and and you do not receive our witness if i have told you of earthly things and you and you if i've told you earthly things and you do not believe how will you believe if i tell you of heavenly things no one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven that is the son of man who is in heaven okay as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so the son of man must be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life and of course we all know john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but ever have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Of course, that's Jesus. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. After these things, Jesus and his di disciples came into the land of Judea, and there re remained with him and baptized. Now John also was baptizing at a place, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John had not yet been thrown into prison. This is speaking of John the Baptist, of course. 
Then there arose a dispute between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. Jesus answered and said, A man cannot receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. This is a great verse. He must increase, but I must decrease. As a believer, we are to exalt Christ. We are to bring glory to God. And we are to be humble. He who comes from above is above all. But he who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard that he testifies and no one receives his testimony. He who receives his testimony has certified that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God does not give the Spirit by measure. The Father loves the Son in heaven and has given all things to his hand. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. That is a wonderful chapter. And basically, the whole chapter is pointing to Christ. The purpose of life is to give glory to God. Of course, today is a, a very special day. We came here to North Carolina to see our daughter, Kristen. She had a couple days of liberty. And very soon, we're going to be taking her back to her base. So we're going to pray for her. And we can pray for all those that are serving in our military. Uh, so let's go ahead and close our Bible reading with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we do thank you for your word. We thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross to pay for our sins. And we pray that... Uh, um, you would guide and direct us according to your will. We pray for Kristen as she's going back to the Marines in just a very short time. We pray for all those that are serving our nation. We pray that you would protect them. We pray that you would keep them safe. We pray that they would um, place, that many of them would place their faith and trust in you. Even this, this weekend, I was able to share the gospel with lots of soldiers while we were at the mall and and other people, I just pray that um, you would use that as a seed of the gospel in the hearts and minds of many. Because in Isaiah 55, it says that your word will not return void. But uh, we pray for Kristen, and we pray that you just keep her safe and watch over her. And uh, help her to always think about you and to uh, always... Um, look upon you and read the bible every day and spend time on prayer and lord uh we think of the verse proverbs 22 6 train up a child in the way they should go and when they are old they will not depart from it my wife and i we've not been perfect parents but our heart's desire is that all three of our kids would be saved and that they would love you with all their heart soul mind and strength and look to you for guidance and direction for their life. And uh, as we drop off Kristen tonight, we're going to head off on a journey. We just pray that you would give us safe traveling mercies. And uh, we love you and we praise you and we exalt you and we thank you for blessing us. With my wife and I, one, I thank you for blessing me with a wonderful wife. And I thank you for blessing us with three wonderful children. They are a great blessing to me. It's a great joy being a father, and um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Lord, uh, help me to be a good representation of you, Lord. In 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day and God bless. And happy Father's Day. Bye. Bye.